Would you like to have access to a tool that allows you to see and better manage what's happening on your student iPads? Then consider using Apple Classroom. If you've used Casper Focus in the past to manage student iPads, you may be wondering why you would switch to Apple Classroom. Apple Classroom has replaced Casper Focus, specifically with the newest updates of iOS 10 and 11. Apple Classroom does the same job as Casper Focus did, but it has added benefits. So from this point forward, we're going to be using Apple Classroom. Apple Classroom is an app that's used on the teacher's iPad. It needs to be installed from self-service, but it only needs to be installed on the teacher's iPad to use it. Once an Apple Classroom class is created and set up, and the teacher has the iPad app on their iPad, it can be used to monitor and control student iPads. So let's take a look at a teacher's iPad as they use Apple Classroom to manage one student in their class. So we're going to open up. Here we are in Apple Classroom, and you can see that I've only got one student available. I'm clicking on the Apps button, and I'm opening Book Creator, an app available on the student iPad. Now, if you want to lock them in, you'll have to click the Lock button. It'll open up, and then you can see near the top, I'll have to click Unlock to unlock them from the iPad. That'll keep them from moving around on the iPad. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the student's screen. So I've clicked on the Screens button, and here you'll get little flash images of the different screenshots of the different students. Obviously, this student's the only one who's nearby. But let's say that I'm a little bit distracted by that student. I can lock them in and say, nope, we're not going to be doing that right now. Lock them down. Or we can take a closer look at their iPad, and here you can see what happens on that student's screen. So the next thing we're going to do is show how some apps will allow you to open up the iPad, uh, or the files on the iPad, I should say, right on the student's screen. So here I'm going to open up a Keynote file. I'm going to click Share. And you can see that my Apple Classroom class appears. What this will do is actually send the file over to the student for their editing and work on it there. So that's something that the students then can do with the work. And here you can see this is now on the student's iPad. It shows what app they're in, or I can see what screen they're on. This is the end. I've ended the class, and now I can see a brief view of what is happening on the iPad. Before you can use Apple Classroom for the first time with your students, you'll need to set up class lists. Class lists can be generated from Infinite Campus rosters, as is being displayed in the background video here, using the STW Intranet Casper Focus tool, or you can create customized lists based on the users that you have in your vicinity or group. Don't worry, the tutorial you're seeing in the background isn't the only way you can learn how to set up a Casper Focus class list. At the end of this video, you'll find a link to a resource that will show you detailed instructions on setting up Apple Classroom class lists. This is a one-time thing at the beginning of a school year or semester, and then you'll be able to use Apple Classroom meaningfully every day from that point forward without too much extra effort. The only snag to using Apple Classroom is that both the student and the teacher must have Bluetooth turned on on their iPad. This is going to be an expectation in your classroom if you wish to use Apple Classroom. Students must have Bluetooth turned on in order to function with Apple Classroom. Apple Classroom uses Bluetooth to communicate and control student iPads. Bluetooth must be turned on for the student and for the teacher, and the student must be within the range that Bluetooth communicates, which is about 40 feet or less. Once a student leaves the range that Bluetooth can connect with it, the student's iPad is no longer visible to the teacher and cannot be managed. And that's all. With those simple steps, you'll be able to get started with Apple Classroom today. If you'd like more information on how to set up a class list or an independent list for Apple Classroom, or how to use Apple Classroom in your class, 
to manage student iPads and see what's happening on student devices, visit the link tinyurl.com slash sdwclassroom.